Hey, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to come up with cool worship guitar parts and specifically show you some cool things around phrasing as well as how to come up with some really lush sounding voicings on the guitar. Let's go ahead and play the part and afterwards I'll come back and break everything down for you so you can see the chords I used, the different techniques I used and then go ahead and use that in your own playing. Here we go. Alright, so there you have it. This past Sunday, we played a song called Come and Let Your Presence um, in, in church. And basically, these were some of the parts that I came up with to kind of spice things up because it's pretty much just the um, three chords for the most part over the chorus, which is D, F sharp minor, and E. And then the verses uh, pretty much hangs around in A most of the time. So harmonically, not a lot happening from a chordal perspective. So I had a couple of different ways that I could, you know, spice things up from a guitar point of view, depending on where the song was going in the moment. So let's start off by playing that intro melody. And basically all the guitar is doing there is playing the melody that the vocals are singing. Now, when it comes to um, playing vocal melodies on the guitar, um, you really want to try and get kind of a lyrical quality in your lead guitar playing. What does that mean? Well, you kind of want to make it sound like something that someone would sing, and not only something that they would sing, but it, you want it to sound like the way a vocalist might sing a part. Now, there's a couple of things as it relates to getting more lyrical quality in your playing, but what you want to use is known as phrasing. So there's a bunch of different phrasing techniques. You get hammer-ons and vibrato, pull-offs, slides, bends, all those kind of things. So for this particular version, I kind of played something to the effect of this. <laughs> So they had vibrato, slides, hammer-ons, and pull-offs. And hammer-ons and pull-offs collectively known as slurs. So what's happening there is vibrato is kind of like a rapid variation in pitch, um, where I'm kind of bending the string up and down fairly rapidly in order to give it that lyrical quality. A lot of vocalists, when they sing, they have kind of a signature vibrato in the way that the note sounds. So you don't always want to display a note plain like this. <laughs> You want to kind of infuse your own character into that note. 
And that's something that you really want to develop in the same way that our fingerprints are all unique. Your vibrato is going to sound like you if you learn to develop it. So if you listen to B.B. King or Steve Ray Vaughan, obviously they're blues guitarists, but they just have to play one note and I'll know whether it's B.B. King or Steve Ray Vaughan just by their signature vibrato. Very important. So go and practice being able to add vibrato on your notes, but also be selective with it. You don't want to overdo it and kind of make it sound like a scared uh, sheep, so to speak. You know, you get those... Uh... I can't even do it um, the way um, some people do that, but that's like just really overdoing it. You just want to get like a nice, smooth vibrato going. The second thing is use hammer-on. So you'll see when I went to my second note... You know, I'm hammering onto the note instead of picking it, then it, it just has a smoother sound, you know, as you're playing the note. And then secondly... So see, the first time I pick it, the second time I hammer onto it. And then I go to my next note. So that's another thing that singers do. They don't sing the notes all the way like... You know, like we would pick it. They, they kind of blend into notes and they... A hammer on and slur into the kind of notes in that way. So that's what I did. And I did it also when I went to the, the E note. So that pick, hammer, pick. Sounds much smoother than pick, pick, pick. You know, that sounds like very matter of fact playing those lines. So you want to kind of get some embellished um, way of playing your melodies when you do it to make it sound more like a singer. And I can't really sing, um, so, you know, that's why I try and sing on a guitar more than, um, than, than most people might try to do just because they, if they're a singer, that you're going to have that expression vocally. Now, since I don't have that um, or, or learned how to do that, I try and make my guitar sing. So that line was basically the following. <laughs> slide up to the ninth fret which is E and then it went up to and up the octave then and again that uh, pick hammer pull you know, it's kind of a little trill something that singers also do from time to time so that was just a kind of intro for the song um, when you go and play melodies that the vocals sing, it's very important that you kind of learn how to play those and then try and, and emulate the singers, the way that they phrase it and also the way that they sound the notes. And you're going to do that with your rhythm as well as your articulation techniques that we've discovered. So let's move on to the next part. All right, so this next part sounded like this. <laughs> So there's not much happening there other than kind of two note voicing. So this is a D. This is an F sharp minor. And that is an E. And it comes from these triads, D, F sharp minor, and E. But I'm just playing the notes on the fourth and second strings, which is why I call these four two voicings for D. F sharp minor and for E. So my voicings are, I've only got two notes, so they really cut through the mix. And what I can then use is my hybrid picking to kind of uh, give some life to those notes. And uh, it sounded like this. think about a piano player they don't play like this they don't slam all the keys all the time which is what a lot of guitar players do is they'll play a chord and they'll just strum everything at the same time nothing wrong with that when you need a strumming part but sometimes you want more of that arpeggiated feel which an arpeggio is really just another word of saying broken chord so we want to break the chord up so what I'm doing there is a combination of two things is I'm playing both notes together and also separately so those are the, are the first two ways in which I can sound this chord together 
separate. And then I can also embellish it by hammering on to... I've got a broken chord, but I'm hammering on to my high note. Or I'm sliding into my high note. So that's a combination. I'll play it again. You can use the feature on YouTube to make the video slower if you want to see that. But essentially, it's just a combination of those three things. Picking both notes together with hybrid picking, my pick and my finger, splitting the two notes separately, and the third one is hammering onto my higher note. So it sounded something like this. You can also add vibrato like you've seen me do now. I'll try and do it a little bit slower. So there you have the picking pattern. What's also cool about that is when you let the notes ring over each other and using vibrato, it starts to create these awesome textures and even some overtones that are happening um, as a result of the overdrive sound that I've got here. So, um, you're not just playing the notes, you're playing the notes, but then you're kind of altering them in the way that they sound as a result of using vibrato and letting the notes ring together. All right, hopefully you're getting a lot out of this when you kind of break it down and show you really what these parts are comprised of. Because sometimes you end up hearing something on a record, uh, but you don't really quite know how that's made up of when it comes to the actual guitar part. So what we're gonna do is let's end this video here. It's getting a little bit long. In the next video, we'll carry on with the rest of these voicings. Again, show you exactly quarterly what I'm doing, the voicings, the scales I'm using, the right hand rhythm patterns, as well as the thinking behind these guitar parts. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna get access to the next one, make sure you are subscribed to our channel, hit that bell icon, because then you'll get notifications whenever we release new videos. And also check out the links in the description because if you're happening to watch this sometime in the future, we'll also already have the link to the follow-up video in the description below, or we'll just link to it from the video right here. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support. And if you want to go deeper and develop your worship guitar skills in a deeper way, go ahead and check out the links in the description. We've got a bunch of resources available, some free, some paid, and you can go ahead and check that out in order to take your guitar playing to the next level and really make the most of the potential and the ability that you have as a guitarist to lead and serve your congregation in worship. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.